Hi, Sophie. Well, we're going to talk to uh, Vihad Beheshti in just a couple of seconds, but you can have a look at his encampment here, uh, tents and flowers and, and other items. He's been here for 30 days outside the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. He wants the British government to designate the Revolutionary Guards of Iran, or the IRGC, as a terrorist organization, or essentially put them in the same category as, say, ISIS or Al-Qaeda, and they are a notorious group, thought partly responsible for the suppression of popular protests that we've been seeing in Iran over the last six months. Uh, Vahid has been on a hunger strike for 30 days. You are quite weak. Um, you haven't had anything to eat. A, couple of, a, a cup of coffee and some sugar cubes, I'm told, a little bit of water. How, how are you doing? I'm, I'm still standing surviving yes as you described i'm getting weaker physically but internally i'm getting stronger and i'm determined and certain to carry on till we achieve this great goal for not just iranian people or the or the people of ukraine this who do these days get killed by the, the irgc drone which supply to putin I'm here, I'm carrying on this protest and hunger struck for our fellow British citizens because today we experience the hands of and we see the hands of IRGC here in London. When okay. Metropolitan Police a few uh, weeks ago asked uh, Iran International TV station to relocate from London to DC, that because of the threat of IRGC, that means okay. we are not safe here because of the threat of IRGC and I will continue this. Yes, the, the Revolutionary Guards are accused of having operations at home and externally as well. MI5 has uh, released a report about their activities in countries like the UK. Why this form of protest, this extreme form of protest? I mean, you may damage your health. You could even lose your life doing this. At, um, first, uh, we didn't start it from here. We've been in talk, in talk and conversation, and we had the two conference in a Parliament about this issue. And the process was going smoothly. Suddenly, we experienced there is an obstacle. From our contacts and few MPs, we heard, uh, we understand the obstacle is from Foreign Office. Okay. And then the talk didn't work. And I, what I would like to show our leaders and politicians. There are still people who they are willing to pay whatever price in order to defend our values, British values, okay. freedom and democracy, and our rights here. And I'm willing to do this and continue this hunger struggle till we achieve this together. So you think you have support from some MPs, government MPs uh, as well, but you haven't had any word from the Foreign Secretary, from James Basically, Cummings. I can... Basically, I can loudly say we have the majority of MPs with us. We have Tom, Mr. Tom Tugendhat, Ms. Uh, Suela. They all are pro this. Even Mr. Rishi Sunak, before he elected as our prime minister, he stated in one tweet, IRGC should be placed on the list of terrorist organizations. Okay. So we have them all. They agree with that. The only obstacle is from this a building for an office and hopefully by a little bit of motivation okay. we will achieve this. Okay, very quickly, uh, we're joined here also by Richard Ratcliffe, the husband of Nazanin, who was held by the Revolutionary Guard for, for six years. You know something about this form of protest as yeah, well, don't no, you? Trying, I've been on this very, very spot in a tent like that uh, for 21 days, so this is 30 days. Um, that was incredibly hard um, and, again, didn't do that lightly. It, it felt like it was a long battle. I feel an awful lot for what he's going through. Um, and, and, yes, as you say, it's, it's a visceral form of protest. He's trying to make a clear statement to the Foreign Office to reconsider this policy, to explain why you're not doing it, um, and I hope that they'll listen. The government has said, look, just a couple of days ago, we placed sanctions on senior members of the IRGC, the Revolutionary Guards. We do take this issue seriously. We are acting on this. Yeah, look, I think it's good whenever the government sanctions any wrongdoing. Um, I think if you think in our case, I always felt the government was soft peddling in response to Iran's hostage taking, um, would treat it like it was a domestic human rights issue for Iran and not really a security issue. Um, Vahid's right. When you have the situation of 
British journalists being threatened uh, on the streets of London, um, that's not okay. Um, okay. And, you know, I think the government does need to look seriously at what it can do. Okay. Thank you very much, Richard Ratcliffe. Uh, from the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, uh, we will hand you back to, to London now.